Hello. Is this thing on? Okay. Today, you will be learning about functions. Functions are dealing with inputs and outputs, also known as X's and Y's. And you're going to learn what happens when you graph the inputs with its outputs on a graph. Something cool happens. So you will sit down and you will listen. So the definition of function is a special relation where each member of the domain is paired exactly with one member of the range. Domain and range are fancy words for other words you've probably heard before. Like an input gives an output. An x gives a function of x. You won't see that as often anymore. A few years ago, they used to give that f of x thing. But now they usually just give an x giving an output of a y. And then finally, you could think of it as the domain gives an output of the range. The domain is all of the inputs. The range is all of the outputs. So let's talk about the rule. The rule is an expression that converts the input to the output. What are you doing to the input to get the output? So you've got your x, you've got this y equals 2x minus 4, and then you have a y. This part right here in the red box is known as the rule. The rule is the thing you're doing to the input to get the output. So I'm going to give you some inputs. And basically, we take the rule and we substitute in the x for each different problem. So for this first one, we're going to plug in a negative 4. So we're going to go ahead and plug in all of these. 2 times negative 4 minus 4. If you need to, write it out on some paper, but it works out to a negative 12. If you do 2 times negative 2 minus 4, you're going to get a negative 8. 2 times 0 minus 4 gives you a negative 4. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 4 gives you a 0. And then we have, finally, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. Now, if you notice, all of the inputs are the same distance apart. They're all two apart. Look at the outputs. Those are all the same distance apart also. Now, if your inputs are going in in the same pattern, you'll get these kind of things happening with the inputs and outputs. But all of those numbers, all of those inputs are the domain. All of those outputs are the range. So the next thing we're going to talk about is slopes. Slopes are steepness and direction of a line. There's four kinds of slopes. You're going to think of slopes as rise over run, how far up you go, how far over you go. That'll come in handy when you start learning secrets of the linear equation. We're not really going to get into it in this session, but it's a cool thing to know. But you do need to recognize what a slope looks like. There's four types. We have positive slopes. When looking at it from left to right, it goes upward. We have negative slopes. When looking at them left to right, they go downward. When looking at a zero slope, that's just a horizontal line. Picture a zero just sitting there on that line and not rolling anywhere. For no slope, that is a vertical line that is straight up and down. And a lot of kids confuse the zero slope and no slope, but picture that vertical line over here. No zero or anything would be able to sit on that line because it's going straight up and down. So you have learned about how to put function equations into a table. Now you're going to learn how to take that table and graph the inputs and outputs. Something really cool happens.
happens. Okay, graphing functions. What you want to do to graph functions is to make a table, get those inputs and outputs taken care of, and then you're going to take that input and output and graph it like an ordered pair on a coordinate graph. Those x and y axes, that's a coordinate graph. So here we go. We're going to give you a table. Now they give you the inputs, and in this case, they've got a negative 1, a 0, a 1, 2, and a 3. With, if you have to make your own inputs, always try using 0 as an input, and then try to keep your numbers pretty close to 0, because if you use large numbers, they're going to go off your graph and you might not have enough space for them. So you don't want to start with an input like 20 or anything like that. So we're going to do this first input for negative 1. You can write this out on your own piece of paper, or you can do it in your head, as long as you get the right answer. Uh, we've got this 2 times negative 1 minus 3, that negative 1 being your first input. So we have a negative 2 minus 3, that's going to work out to negative 5. If you put in a 0, that's 2 times 0, and we're getting that based off of up here, 2 times whatever x is, minus 3. In this case, 2 times 0, 0, minus 3. So we're going to get a negative 3. If you do an input of 1, that becomes 2 minus 3, which is a negative 1. If you plug in a positive 2, that's going to become 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 3 is a positive 1. And then we have 2 times 3 minus 3. That's going to end up being 3. Oops, 3. So now we're going to graph these. We're going to treat that like an ordered pair. Negative 1, negative 5 means if you were to start on the origin, you'd go left 1 and down 5. So you're going to end up with that red dot there. 0, negative 3. Well, you don't move right or left at all, and you go down 3 going to be right there. 1, negative 1 is what we're looking at next. That's going to be right 1 and down 1. Right 1 and down 1. 2, 1 would end up being right 2 and up 1. 3, 3 is going to be right 3 and up 3. It's going to go right here. Now notice all these points that we've graphed. They all line up along a straight line. This is known as a linear function. When your inputs and outputs are graphed and they line up in a straight line, this is a linear function. What kind of slope is this graph showing? Well, it's going from left to right. It's going upward. That would be considered a positive slope. So soak that in for a second. We're going to do another one now. So we have our equation, we have our graph. We want to figure out what a graph of these inputs and outputs would look like, so we're going to need to make a table first. So here's our table. We've got the same inputs as before. We always want to use 0 as an input and then keep the others pretty close to 0. You could have had a few more negative numbers. doesn't matter. They're all going to hopefully fall along the same line. So if I put in negative 3 times negative 1 plus 2, that's going to be 3 plus 2. If I put in a 0, negative 3 times 0 is 0, add 2, you get a 2. Negative 3 times 1 is going to be negative 3 plus 2, which is going to give you a negative 1. If we plug in a 2, that's going to be negative 6 plus 2, which gives us negative 4. Negative 3 times 3 plus 2, that's going to be negative 9 plus 2. We're going to get that. So now we're going to graph negative 1, 5. That's left 1, up 5. 0, 2 is going to be not right or left at all, but up 2. 1, negative 1 would be right 1, down 1. 2, negative 4 is going to be right 2 and down 4. 3, negative 7 is going to be 
3, negative 7 is going to be right 3 and down 7, which puts us a little bit off the graph, but that's where it would be. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Do they all line up? That means we're doing it right. If one of the points was off, you know, like let's say at this input of 1 gave me an output of 8, and it was way down here, we'd know something was wrong. All your points should line up. This is a linear function. So what kind of slope is this line making? It's going from left to right. It's going downward. That's going to be a negative slope. There you go. It's a negative slope. All right. Negative x plus 3. I'm going to go through this one a little bit faster. We've got our equation. We've got our table. And we've got our graph. So we're going to first represent this equation in a table. So the thing that gets weird about this one is negative x means negative whatever your input is. A lot of kids will think, oh, it's already negative 1. I don't need to do much. But you do, because double negative 1 actually becomes positive 1 plus 3. Then negative 0 plus 3, well, negative 0 is still 0. You're going to get an output of 3. And then we have negative 1 plus 3. That becomes a 2. If I do this one, negative 2 plus 3. There we go. And then if I do negative of 3 and add 3, we actually end up with nothing there. Now, it's kind of weird. We have an input of 0 giving 3 and then an input of 3 giving 0. Sometimes that happens. We're going to go ahead and graph negative 1, 4. So that's going to be left 1 and up 4. Left 1 and up 4. 0, 3 is going to be right there. 1, 2 is going to be right 1 up 2. Does it look like they're all falling in the same line? It sure does to me. 2, 1. 2, 1 is going to be right 2 up 1. 3, 0 is going to be right 3 and not up or down. There we go. What kind of slope is this graph showing? From left to right, it's going downward. It's going to be negative. So here comes the next one. Half of x minus 1. y equals 1 half times x minus 1. A problem like this, you really want to consider your inputs. In this case, halving a number basically means divide by 2. You don't want to use odd inputs. Notice how I used all even inputs. Because that sure makes dividing by 2 a lot easier. So when I do half of negative 6 minus 1, that's going to be negative 3 minus 1. Because half of negative 6 is negative 3. You get negative 4. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. And then take away 1 or move left 1. That puts you at negative 3. Negative 2. Half of negative 2 is negative 1 minus 1. Half of 0 is nothing, minus 1. Now, this is where a lot of kids might make mistakes. They might go, oh, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and they might just put a 0 here because just to continue the pattern. But if you look at the inputs, you've got this negative 6 to negative 4 to negative 2 to 0. Those are all jumping by 2. But then all of a sudden it jumps by 6. So you can't always assume that it's just going to continue the above pattern. So you have to be real careful with that. So we have half of 6 is 3 minus 1, and it gives us a 2. And then when we graph them, that's left 6 down 4. So it's going to be right there. Negative 4, negative 3, that's left 4 down 3. Negative 2, negative 2 is going to be left 2 down 2. 0, negative 1. You don't move right or left at all, and you go down 1. And 6, 2 is going to be right 6 and up 2. Right 6, up 2. Now, even though it's far apart, it still falls in line with the other guys. What kind of slope is this? This is going to be a positive slope. Cool. And then we have this. Now, this is kind of weird. y equals 3. doesn't say anything about x's. 
How many x's do we see up here? We see no x's at all. So you could think about this. How many x's do we see? No x's at all. You could think of this as 0x plus 3. This one's real tricky. This one will make more sense as you learn down the road. But we're going to go ahead and try this one out because it's important that you see this. If you put in a negative 6, well, 0 times negative 6 is 0 plus 3. Put in a negative 4. 0 times that is 0 plus 3. Huh. Put in a negative 2. 0 times that is 0 plus 3. 0 times 0 plus 3. I wonder what this output will be. 0 times 6 is 0 plus 3. So for every input we had, we had the same output for all of them. Let's graph this. Left 6, up 3. Left 6, up 3. Left 4, up 3. It's going to be right there. Left 2, up 3 is going to be right there. 0, 3. 6, 3. Do they all line up? What kind of slope is this one? It's going to be a zero slope. When you have, looking back at the original equation, when you have a y equals 3, that's basically showing that you're going to have a horizontal line. And we'll learn more about that when you learn about your, in, your down the road. All righty.